So Ashley is asking, um, hey John, I have a question about some advice that was given to me by the art director for Hearthstone. Then why are you asking me? <laughs> he, he told me to read a site with this graphic about how color behaves as far as saturation as it moves from light to shadow. Very roughly, I can understand that the colors tend to uh, move more to more saturated in the midtones, but I'm wondering if there is more to it than that, especially in terms of Hearthstone stop. Yeah, I mean, clearly, my opinion is greater. First of all, thank you, Ashley, for thinking that my opinion is greater than um, Hearthstone art director. I mean, it's only natural. <laughs> oh, God. Um, is there more to saturation as it moves from light to shadow? Um, and also you attach the reference, which is good, because I, I would have to go and search it myself. But um, let's make a new layer. Uh, I mean, there's this graph that you're looking at here. here. Here's one thing I will say right away. Hearthstone does not follow how actual color work. I know. I know. Big gasp, everyone. <gasps> as, you, as you can pretty much tell, they they take it to a notch, or two, or they actually open the goddamn faucet and let the river uh, go through, because they love their colors. Um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, so in reality, um, as you said, mid-tones tend to be the most saturated, uh, tend to have the most saturated color, but it depends on how it is used. So for example, um, on a very desaturated color, um, the light can also saturate a local color, depending on what kind of light source you have. So, for example, um, of course, I will demo what I'm what I'm talking about, but I always I prefer to explain first and do after. You look at generally neon lights, you know. They, Hearthstone tends to take, uh, if we were going to compare it to uh, reality, it's almost like their characters are, are lit. Or in this image specifically, it's like their char his character is lit by neon lights. It's the only way a color would take over this, the light here. Let me pick a different, different color here. The light here, the only way, the only time this would happen where a light source color completely takes over a, a local color and for those who don't know a local color is is the color of the natural color of the um material so in this case it's like this wooden i actually don't know if this wooden if these trunks or something because there's like spikes on them i don't i don't understand but uh it looks like wood regardless so if this was not uh, a more natural light source, the light, the light color would mix in a little bit with the local um, uh, color and they would blend a little bit and um, they would form uh, a new a new color but it, it would be mostly influenced by the trunk or the, whatever this thing is. Um, and Hearthstone tends to do, it tends to use a lot of a lot of this, even for their main light sources like here and here, uh, their main light source uh, seems to influence quite a lot the local colors. And where do you see the most local colors? It tends to be the mid tones or the half tones, if you wanna, if you wanna call it that, right? If you wanna use the the little the little graph here on the on the left, which is quite useful for me. Um, they like take these to to oblivion. They really saturate their images, which is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. I mean, it helps their look, right? Um, I'm just rereading your question to make sure I didn't miss anything. Yeah, related to Hearthstone style. 
uh, which is important because you know um, how light behaves IRL versus in Hearthstone is like it's like it would like light color would be on crack pretty much. Um, so let's stop with the boring explanation and bring this question to do, do, do the corner because I'll have to reference it again later. Put it there. Uh, let's take an area of this reference. Where would be the best that I that I could explain to you? Uh, so this is specifically a color question or a saturation slash light color question. Uh, no, a color slash light question. Um, I would say. I'll take, I'll take like the oh you know what this thing this thing here. Shoulder pads tend to be like white or maybe the face even ah oh, this the skull face. All right, uh, I'm not gonna focus on the render by the way. Uh, just a quick quick spoiler. I'm not gonna focus on the render at all. Take that, because so the reason why I took this is because um, it shows mid tone, it shows the cold color, it shows the uh, warm color, and just a little bit of the main light source here at the top. But I uh, it has the most variety and it's the best to give an example on. So let's bring it here and uh, do the demo. All right, so. Uh, first thing you do, or first thing I would do, is think of the least affected uh, color of. So I know it's a skull, but is this an actual skull texture? So I, I am. I'm actually a little bit confused. I don't know if this bone is meant to be bone, just because the way they rendered bone in this image. I'm not trash talking anyone. It's just. Part of the style, the bone here. I'd say I actually I'd say it's bone because here there's wood and wood has a, a, a different look to it. So um, to get a bit confusing. So let's take this bone. Okay, the least affected bone color uh, in the image. What would it be? So in in reality, that could be like a if it has been oxidized, a skull can can range all the way from this to like. Quite yellow and like muddy and dark, right? But um, this is Hearthstone, so you uh do a line of coke and you go hard. Let's go quite dark, quite deep. So there's gonna be all these other colors affecting it, but um, all right, that's good enough. Now I'm not gonna be very. I'm not gonna try and and, and draw properly. I'm just kind of like going around the major forms here. Let's see the horns. Uh, because there's no point in wasting time actually drawing it properly if the question is about color. Um, but I'll try just a little bit. There we go. There's one the horn. There's another one. And it's good enough. So we fill in the color. Oh, so for this, the process, I guess this is a bonus thing for the process. I would actually just um, wait. get the magic wand tool, invert selection, and bam. How did I do that? Well, if you pay me four ninety nine, I will tell you. <laughs> kidding. You you select you you use the one tool, to select the outside, and then you invert the selection, which is Control Shift I, and you shift backspace, uh, which brings up this fill. Hold on, my thing went down, went off. There you go. 
brings up this fill thing and you can change uh, the setting here and it says foreground color, background color, whatever. I just put foreground color and it fills the whole thing and you can select. DLC. If you want to know how I did this, there's DLC for $4.99. <laughs> um, so we have the shape here. Naturally, you you know, if this was a real painting, you'd have probably a line drawing or some sort of like value to it. But because I'm using the reference, I can skip a bunch of steps because I already know how it looks like because it's right next to me. Um, I will add a bit of form. So uh, also everything has color in it. So this is a color question. I almost forgot. Uh, even the shadows. Uh, they might seem desaturated, but there's quite a bit. There's quite a bit of color in this in this shadow. It might not look like it, but um, there's a little bit of that. Let's just do this. Go. A little bit of value. All these other like blue, greens, etc. will come in just a second. I just want to add the add some form here. All right, here's the cheekbone, goes in, blah, blah. Uh, I've been addicted to this triangle brush lately, so that's what I'm using. And it actually fits perfectly to um, Hearthstone style because Hearthstone tends to have very uh, sharp edges, or gen generally speaking, it's just very, it's very edgy, full of, Six and year olds playing it, and boomers who don't know how to play actual card game games. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so let's add just a little bit of form um, to give shape to our our bony boy here. All right, so. The environment is going to take quite a bit of. It seems like local color in Hearthstone um, uh, illustrations, generally speaking, not all, obviously, but generally speaking, local color isn't a huge deal. Like, it, it's not. It gets affected by pretty much light and environment um, beyond recognition almost. Do that. So we have a little bit of form here to work with, and I can start plopping my my colors. Splash, 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 splash. All right. Okay. So, um, from this point on, let's let's pretend this is done. I'll even like like smooth it out a little bit. You know, like oh look, it's a gradient. Everyone loves gradients. It's like it's almost as if it's done. Um, just like I'm using a smudge brush, by the way, to smooth this out, which you can find on my DeviantArt. Hashtag sponsor. Uh, all right, so just blend it in a little bit and smooth it out. Uh, okay, so now. Let's assume this is our base color. I would actually make it a touch green, but not too much because then there's the environment affecting it quite a lot. Um, so a little, a little green, a little yellow here and there, and it's good to go. Now we can begin with these shadows because not not because you have to, but because the way I paint. I always prefer to start with the shadows. It's not a rule. It's not exactly how this guy made it. I don't know how he made it, but I mean the end result will look pretty much the same. But um, you can choose however however way you want to start uh, doing. I prefer shadows. You can start with lights. You can start with mid tones. Who knows? Um, so their shadows right off the bat, they're like shadow. Is this a shadow? If it's a shadow. And it's cold and it's blue, and they really like 
they do the second line of coke and they like really saturate this this shadow here like they were really dark like bam this this is blue <laughs> um wait there you go wait i'm trying to there you go There's the temperature um you can see that it's quite blue now but uh eventually it won't because uh actually let's make it a little greener because uh, of all the blue colors around it that I will add eventually. So, blue is quite softly done. Um, I'm going to keep on adding to the shapes here. Uh, here it's actually not blue, it's green, but I'll add just a little bit for the definition. Um, this might be a longer. Uh, answer as well. Usually, I try to keep these answers to like 20 minutes or so, but uh, colors is another one of those things that needs to be actually processed through, otherwise, it won't work. So, let's add a little gradient here. So, it's we're starting to make some areas bluish. Using using the shadow. Uh, actually, I could use even a uh, soft round brush. We'll do. Wait, this one's too hard. There you go. Just starting to uh, affect. I'm starting to affect the local color of of this bony boy quite a bit. Now you don't have to use a soft brush by the way, it's just there's multiple multiple ways to roam, you know? Multiple roads to roam. So we we're just choosing one of them. Right? So immediately you can you can tell that the blue is becoming you know as I apply more more of it throughout becoming less distinct and it actually looks desaturated even though it's satur saturated as hell for a dark color it is like pretty damn saturated um we're gonna eventually add a little bit of green because there's like a fog layer over it and that affects all of the colors but until we get there we take steps and that's what we're doing right now so steps boy Um, let's actually go a little bit green already. Uh, the shadow here mainly is like affected by the glowing green eyes in this area. Going back to my triangle brush. Here it is. Now my my image still looks quite warm. And some of it won't look exactly the same because it needs render time. Because like I'm not gonna apply all of the shadows everywhere, but the color tone will will be generally the same. All right. Uh, I'm gonna start stopping here. For a moment, we might come back. Now the lines of coke that I did are making my nose itchy, which is always great. All right. Okay, I feel like we can. This is a good place to stop. I'm um, uh, you want like for this kind of look, you want to dirty it up a little bit, and the clean it cleanliness of the shapes will come from like rendering over once all of the colors are uh, kind of applied there. Uh, so we're going to pause for the shadows. This was a shadow pass. You can see. New layer. Um, and new layer. I'm, I'm seeing if they use adjustment layers, but I think a lot of this, for this specifically this image, a lot of it was um, was manually done with 
with the with the distinction of like little areas that glow here and there probably was overlay layer. So we'll, when we'll get there, we'll we'll figure it out. So at this point, you can decide what where to go. I'll do the eyes because why not? Like let's let's go with the green, shall we? So since we were sort of going greenish, and I don't think this was a special layer either. Um, you can tell when something was done with like an overlay layer or whatever because there's a um, there's a build up effect to it right? and these ones look kind of kind of flat i could be wrong uh in any of these decodes the chances of me being wrong can be quite high so um what matters though is that the end result will be pretty much the same as far as color goes. I'm actually brightening up the shutters a little bit. Right? But as you see, like I, this is already really saturated. Like, look at my color wheel. Look where my color is. And I still feel like it's too desaturated. So we're going to go ham. Also, it needs to be darker too. That, that, that's also at fault. But like, look at it. It's almost touching the edge of like saturation there. All right, and now uh, let's see the same for the nose. Blah blah blah. Again, this is gonna look kind of. We'll we'll clean it up towards the end. Right now, I'm just focusing on the shadow. This is actually a little more blue. The blue here, and we'll clean the edges and everything so it doesn't look so so dirty. Uh, once we put down all the colors, right? I said I wasn't gonna render here. I here I am rendering. Welcome to the stream. This is why you watch. Alright, so I'm actually going to stop myself here. Uh, I'll make a new layer for the... You know what? Let's try. How will it look like with... Uh, over? I don't think an overlay was used. But if something, then maybe a linear dodge. Maybe. Okay, I could see a linear dodge. It, it, at least the same effect is applied. Um, so I'll go with a soft round brush for this one. Yeah, I guess it could be. It doesn't have to. It's a bit more blue than green. And the saturation on this leather trucker is again like I'm going full on this. I'm starting to think that it's not. Yeah, because I, I can't go any any more saturated than that. So I'm gonna call it not um, adjustment layer instead the guy just went and did it on his own yeah that looks more like it so you'll see the moment I start adding these colors it'll start having that effect there we go Hi, too fantastic. How are you doing? There you go. And I even I didn't even add like this is just a rim light, pretty much affecting the local colors. Once I start adding everything else, you see, I'll add a little a little like glow here. You know what? I'll I'll, I'll already do it, do it. Just 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 a little just a little something here. Usually you want to do this at the end, but I'm feeling a little, little uh, risky. Yeah, I want to, I want to do it already. A lot of these like process and stuff. One thing you realize the more you do it is that 
you really need to trust once you already have a process that you're comfortable with and and you can count on it's really one of those things where you have to be patient and there's like steps to it there's a build up steps to it you know you, you just you just you just got to be patient you know one of those things uh that's color number 1 we can do color number 2 which is like an orange uh, it needs to be a little warmer. There you go. It's exactly that. So um, there's there's not there's not so much of a technique here. It's like I first draw lightly and then I build up the brightness and strength. Like I start going over and over and I start and I press harder and harder. Um, that's pretty much all I'm doing here. Like I'm, I'm going. I'm doing it very gently first on the first pass, and then once I have something that I like, I uh, go over it again, and I do this sort of build up. You know, press a little harder on the pen. Go over it a couple of times, and uh, I didn't draw this guy properly. I mean, that wasn't the focus anyways. It was the color, but you know what? I'll just uh, I'll I'll throw in a, a little bonus stack. I'll just clean up this edge a little bit. There we go. Okay. Good enough. Uh, let's not get the let's not get derailed. Maybe it's a layer plus brush mode. Uh, it could be, but I'm not seeing too much of a, I'm not seeing too much of a like drastic. If he did it, then he did it very gently, and I wouldn't go through the trouble of doing that if I can get the same effect with just a normal brush, you know, or a normal normal layer, regular, good old brush, you know, like round brush. If I can get the same, then why do the extra step? Just time consuming to me. So I'll do the rest here. Blah blah blah. Do the teeth. Obviously, I didn't draw draw exactly the same teeth. There's no need to. A little bit on the, the nose here. I might need to go a little darker on my um, darker and bluer on my shadows, but I'll do that uh, towards the end because it looks like some of it has been adjusted with either overlays or other other stuff. We'll we'll, we'll see. We'll try it out. So use a little bit of that, a little bit of this here, and uh, pretty much it's pretty much in these areas. I'll clean it up just a bit. All right, so okay, and uh, let's let's throw in the blue, and that's when I'll know if I need to go darker or not. Uh, which I, from what I can see, I most likely do. Uh, now here is where I don't know. It does look like. The guy just most of the painting has been done manually, as in just in a normal layer. Let's uh, I'm gonna color pick this color here. Let's make it a little older, a little bluer, a little brighter. This is probably the most desaturated. Color here because um, any gray in this really warm and saturated environment, or like a saturated um, color setup, any gray will read as cold because of the contrast of colors, and it just gives the illusion of oh, I'm painting a cold color now. You know, so I'm just gonna go around. Uh, 
and start making these areas look a bit paler and removing some of that green, some of that warmth. Uh, I mean, you can see some of the warmth plopping through, like just, just, just peek, I mean, not plopping, peeking through here and there. But uh, most, most areas tend to be uh, cold looking. Make it a bit brighter, these areas here. And obviously, it's like I'm I'm against the time here. The artists who painted these had time to go through the whole thing. I'm trying to cut the corners here so that we can get something digestible. Anna. Anna, thank you, Anna. I'm not gonna ignore you, Anna. Uh, I'm in the middle of answering the silver decodes, um, but I will get to you once once I'm done answering. Go, guys, go check out Anna. She's awesome. Uh, so as I was saying, I'm going overall trying to brighten some areas, but also uh, making them colder. Obviously, you want to go in there, you want to like blend, you want to make sure that the edges are nice, etc. Um, we're we're fighting against the time here. Uh, I don't want to spend the rest of the stream just rendering this, this skull, and uh, we're going to skip some of that, at least. Have a good meal, Anna. Thank you once again. So let's make this colder here, quite a bit colder. I'm going to do a glaze over. It seems like uh, there's been a lot of glazing over and then going back in there. Uh, like carving out the shapes again, and then going over, and then carving out the shapes again, type of type of deal, things like that. It has been happening quite a lot. But you can see that slowly but surely we're getting there. It might need to be a little uh, bluer in the shadows, maybe a little greener. But once we do a glaze over, you see that we'll, we'll get there pretty easily, pretty quickly. Oh, I forgot. Wait, let me go back. Where's this layer? Here. There's. I forgot the horn. I'm blind. Let me do it quickly. Here we go. I'm blind. Do. Blind. Do. All right. And now, let me look around. Oh, there's this other horn here. I forgot. Um. So I would say the color that I'm painting right now is mostly a uh, ambient. I don't, I wouldn't say this is a light, like a like a main light source. Um, this is mostly from the environment, you know. So we are. It's good to keep um, in mind where does the color when there's a, where there's the light come from, you know. And how much, uh, how strong it is? How much is it affecting an area? And uh, keep tabs on on the remaining uh, light sources, you know, like the warm, the blue, and stuff. So I'm gonna keep going here. Uh, I'm kind of rendering now. I shouldn't really be doing this because I'm I'm wasting time. So I'm, I'm gonna stop right now. Um, let's move on to the next step, which is, uh, this is where I think, um, let me just let's find a little area here. Uh, this is where I think he used like an overlay or something. Let's test it out. Um, let's go with, you know what, let's just go, uh, over, I don't think it's overlay. If something then hard line, but you could be wrong. So we're going to test it. Uh, soft brush. Uh, now, as I said, I need to go greener, like a like an aqua color, darker. There you go. All right, you can see. Finally, the whole build up is uh, starting to be worth it. Again, this is just one of those things that um, 
you kind of have to trust once you know a uh, process you can you can sort of trust it you know because in the beginning it wasn't looking anything like it but the build up step by step uh, sort of brought us there I also am noticing that I forgot it's not a big deal but I kind of want to add the light here I forgot to add to this tooth or whatever this is horn tooth thing there we go so, um, I won't lie making these silver decodes um, segments sometimes I sweat <laughs> Because I'm like, wait, what if I'm just bullshitting everything? And by the end of the, by the end of my explanation, I'm like, oh yeah, guys, wait, we'll see. Everything is gonna come come together. What if it doesn't come together? I just look like an idiot. <laughs> but uh, I've been lucky so far. So thankfully, <laughs> I'll just delete the vod and pretend, yeah, and pretend it never happened. All right, so back to the overlay layer. That's what I'm what I'm at right now. But I do go like shit. What just what if? What if I okay. So right now, uh, I'm using overlay to enhance two things. One, uh, the volume, the overall volume of what we painted underneath, and two. Temperature, color temperature to be specific. So some areas are a little colder, and I'm gonna add some areas that are gonna be a little warmer, a little towards like um, diarrhea color. <laughs> There's a little bit of green here. Um, so that's generally what I'm doing now is uh, glazing over some areas. And also making them darker, making them colder, and whatever is brighter, I'm making them warmer in, in this particular case. It's not a hard rule or anything like that, but that's the look it's it's giving. It's kind of greenish, it's a little too, too much. There's I don't know if you guys can tell, there's a little like oh there it is. Alright. I found it, found it chat. There's a little, uh, there's a little warmth in there. I don't know if you guys can tell. Right under the blue. So, this tells me again that this has been glazed over, painted, glazed, painted. I mean, I say glazed, but what I mean is just, like, there has been some uh, soft brush work going in there with some intensive color and then painted over again. So, I would make another layer on top of this. After after I'm done, I would make another layer, like paint over, um, just manually on a on a normal layer. Let's uh, do. Let's do. Let's do. Also, the goal with the silver decode stuff is so that you guys can see me figure shit out, and then maybe you can apply the same. You know. Sometimes I I don't know the exact answer to some to something, so I go and well decode it. The whole name where it comes from. Um. Jail. <laughs> Glazed Sahara. <laughs> How are you doing, Jail? Um, I'll get to you in a second. Thank you so much for the for the resub. Five five months already. God dang. Um, I'm making this a video, so please don't be mad at me, chat. Uh, if I don't answer to you once I'm done uh, answering uh, a question, I always take a break, and uh, and then I just chat with you. You know. So for now, I will ignore you for a short period of time, but I will be I'll be right back with you. Also, don't make fun of the words I I choose. All right, listen. What do you, what do you think I am? An, an an art instructor? That's why these are free because I can say whatever I want. I can say what I want, and it's free. 
Okay, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, okay? <laughs> All right, uh, let's continue. Um, I'm gonna add still a bit more warmth. Still a bit, oh, there you go, yeah. Just, just a touch, maybe more green. It's very subtle, and I'm being quite anal about this too, but it's there. It's there. Um, the value, the values are pretty similar too, except like I didn't actually go there and render. Um, but it's, uh, I'm gonna blaze over here too. Uh, there's no glow. I almost made a mistake. I'm so used to doing this, by the way. This is not happening. The the actual rim light is... It, there's no glow to it. It's just the line, and that's it. And... I'll do one last thing. Uh, this is pretty much done. As far so the question was about color, not about how it's drawn whatsoever. But I will add an extra so the guy went an extra step where the guy went with a normal brush on top of all of the adjustments and everything and he started probably refining, adding things, also the texture. There's like a beige looking fucking yeah, there you go. See? Like he has he adds these lines to um to the textures here and this is just a normal brush he, he does the outlines and goes in and makes it nice looking etc right and the, his edges are clean because he actually spent time rendering instead of rushing so take it take it with a with a grain of salt and just focus on the uh actual question which is was about color and I'm gonna stop here in a second because I I'm done answering it and it's pre pretty much it just going around cleaning it up a bit you know actually this would would have been done with the soft very soft brown brush and just a touch or two here as well and uh yeah I'll just do a little bit more the edges and I guess I'm here too and you know at this part at, at this point is just detailing and and showing a bit of variety through texture and you know these areas that are a bit more beige that obviously adds color and contrast against the very saturated colors all around so it kind of it stands out as a nice detail it's it's a smart thing to do to if you're adding detail you can use color to um, bring more attention to it by Making it contrast with the overall, you know, temperature, saturation, and all that, all that jazz. All that jazzu. And that's it. I mean, that's not it. Obviously, there's more things to it, uh, other than color. But overall, um, whether the guy, this was the steps the guy made or not, the look is pretty, I'd say it's pretty close. Um, except my skull looks like Goofy and his actually look like something that you might be actually scared of. That concludes my answer for this question. Um, thank you, thank you for watching, if you're watching this on a video. Um,